Welcome to another edition of Mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. And once again, we're going to be talking with Marshall Tremble as he tells us about the gold rush that happened right here in Arizona. Now, we always hear about the one in California, but there was a big one right here, and Marshall's going to tell us all about it. In the gold rush period in Arizona, there were, there were two, two separate times. Um, one was the first big gold rush uh, in the 1850s that began in the 1850s, and the other was around 1900 when they were de demonetizing silver and uh, gold became um, precious again, or, or get, became, you know, a, a new rush started. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit, I'll tell you some of the early days, those are the more colorful ones of the, uh, uh, with the first strikes because some of them were just amazing. Most of them were right around where Yavapai County is. In fact, almost all of them were, the only one that was and was the first one, and that was at uh, 1858 at Gila City on the Gila River, about 20 miles east of Yuma, um, uh, Jake Snevely, uh, who was a um, old Confederate officer and, uh, and uh, uh, Texas, uh, Texas uh, well, just a Texas patriot, let's call him. And uh, he was uh, with a party of gold prospectors. And uh, it, it seems so funny to think they would find placer gold uh, there. But in 1858, there was a strike. I mean, a boom town came overnight. It was called Gila City, and um, and they were they were out there. They they were picking up a hundred dollars a day, uh, panning out a hundred dollars a day in gold, and then blowing it that night because we'll just go out tomorrow and pan out some more. And uh, but when, she, when 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 placer gold plays out, it plays out. It's easy to find. Mm -hmm. Nature has already mined it for you. What is placer gold? Uh, placer gold is. Um, um, it's it's broken away from the from the ore, and it's just out there being polished uh, by the rushing waters, and it's just glistening there, waiting for you to some lucky guy to pick it up. And um, so then the next one was the our old scout Pauline Weaver uh, is uh, uh, over at a place. Uh, it was it was on the uh, uh, the Fiesta de la Paz, the the the, the Fiesta of Our Lady of, of Peace. Um, of uh, it, it, January of 1862, and over in the Colorado River area, uh, at um, a place that would place that would be called um, La Paz, and um, they were taking gold out of there, and uh, some Mexicans were also pay, uh, taking gold. They were just it, it was a, it was a big strike. They've been thinking about making La Paz the territorial capital when uh, Arizona became a cap, uh, it became a separate territory. It was that big a place. But again, um, as uh, Senator Goldwater said, his, his, uh, his grandfather was one of the uh, merchants over there, one of the first settlers, and he says, um, my, my grandfather came out one morning and the Colorado River had moved. <laughs> it was a steamboat landing there uh, with, no, with, with no water now. So he said he just picked up the store and went out and found the river, and that's where Ehrenberg is today. He named, he named the new town Ehrenberg uh, in honor of a, a good friend of his who had just been killed by Indians uh, recently, and Herman Ehrenberg. And so, um, so that was the that was the that was the big strike, the first big strike, um, and they they were really picking it up, and it was it was big, but um, there was more to come. Now, when that with Gila City was going strong, another man comes in uh, as one of the prospectors. His name was Jack Swilling, and old Jack, you know, he 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 gets maligned, and I just, I'm just trying to lionize him because everybody says bad things about him. He had gotten hit in the head and been shot, and he did a very a, a typical thing that people did. Um, uh, he took uh, he, he took laudanum for the pain. This is very common, you know. He could just buy laudanum over the counter, and uh, and he uh, uh, so he was so so he, he, the, the trouble is is he mixed it with alcohol, <laughs> and, uh, and that's dynamite. <laughs> and he did some violent things when he was, but otherwise he was a highly respected, one of the most respected citizens of Arizona of his time in his time. Uh, unless he was drunk, or high on, <laughs> or both. <laughs> well, anyway, Swilling comes along, and um, Swilling is a Swilling is a is, is organizes some uh, militia volunteer because uh, the Yavapai now were attacking these prospectors. Uh, you know, they, they'd been doing all their damage down in Mexico, but all of a sudden, hey, there's here, a, a you know new new talent we can we, we can pluck, uh, and so. Um, 
so it, it, Swilling is on an expedition now, leading, and he comes along about um, uh, about where Avondale is today, up the Salt River. They're, they're following, the, well, actually it was the Gila. They're following the Gila River out, because uh, it becomes, the salt joins it right about Avondale. Anyway, they're coming up the Gila River, and there is a river point coming out of the north, and uh, no white man has ever gone into central Arizona, believe it or not, in 1860. No white man has ever ventured in there. And Swilling is not going to do it either because the Yavapai, the Yavapai are, are, and Atonto Apache both, uh, that's their land. And, and um, there were white people up by the 35th parallel, you know, where Interstate 40 is today going across to California. Uh, but all those central mountains were just void of white people. And so, um, so anyway, he, he remembers it. And uh, these guys had an uh, 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 eye, they, they could dig like a gopher and had an eye of an artist for, for looking uh, for, for geological, you know, the self-taught geologist. And he said, that looks promising, but um, he's not going to dare venture up there. Well, um, fast forward to um, 1863. Meanwhile, the Civil War is going on. He was a Confederate officer during the Civil War by the Arizona Volunteers, Arizona Rangers, and uh, he's a lieutenant. Uh, when the Confederates invade Arizona and make it a Confederate territory. But um, when the, um, uh, he, he, mis he was mainly in there to, uh, as a ranger to fight Indians and raiders on, on, uh, over at Silver City and wherever he had to be. And um, so he gets, um, he gets to New Mexico and um, they've been driven out. The Confederates have been driven out of Arizona and they're headed all, headed all the way back to Texas. And, he, and this is where Swilling says, I joined this to fight Indians, not fight other white men. He said, this is not my fight. And uh, he deserts. And so, um, and then he hooks up with Joe uh, Rutherford Walker, Joseph Rutherford Walker, who is one of the greatest mountain men of them all and explorers. And he is now, a guy, he now has gold fever. He's never been, he's been all over the West, every nook and cranny of the West, but he's never been in central Arizona. And to a mountain man, I ain't been there, so I gotta go there. <laughs> kind of a, it's just an attitude. Okay, so how did the two of them meet and start traveling together? Uh, well, I'll tell you how it happened. Um, they, they captured some Yanks at, uh, at uh, uh, Pima Villages, and they're taking them, escorting them. He is escorting these these uh, Yanks back. Uh, there's William McCleave, Captain William McCleave, and um, Swilling and McCleave uh, start visiting over the campfires at night. Even though one's his prisoner and the other one's the captor, mm -hmm. and um, that's the, and, and they become friends. And and Swilling was is talking about this gold uh, that he's, he's sure there's gold up in the Hacienda River, and um, so McCleave introduces him. To, um, uh, to General Carleton, and then General Carleton, uh, uh, they, they introduce him to Joseph Walker, and Joe Walker has a party of gold seekers coming in, and they're, they're wanting to go into Arizona, but they don't know anything about it. Swilling knows the whole area has been there many times, just not up the Hacienda. So, um, so Swilling, Swilling joins with the Walker party, and they come into Arizona, they, they probably cross over uh, they, they come into southern Arizona, they go to Tucson to buy supplies, and there are none. So they go up to the Pima villages, and uh, there are plenty of supplies there, so they acquire some supplies. They cross the Gila, uh, the, uh, the Salt River, about where Tempe is today, and they head west. And they come to the Hacienda River, and now Swilling has got some uh, fighting men with him. And uh, they're going to go up the they're going to go up the river. Well, they meet the chief um, uh, in uh, Wabatuva. I, I can't remember for sure what his name. But anyway, he informs them. He informs them that um, uh, if you go up there, you'll die. And um, Walker, <laughs> this big six foot four <laughs> giant of a man, uh, could go bear hunting with a switch. And um, he says, um, if we go up there, you'll die. <laughs> and the chief backed off, and so they went. That's how they. That's how they. They bluff their way up the river, up the Hacienda, and uh, they go up the Hacienda and they go all the way up to the headwaters of the river. And there, uh, they find in, in Big Bug and Lynx Creek and all those places, they find gold. I mean, it's a gold rush.
So I would imagine that the gold rush probably had a little bit of influence about making Arizona a territory. Washington finds out about it, uh, and next thing you know, Arizona's a territory. Well, Swilling goes back down. Swilling goes back down to uh, uh, Tucson for something, and um, as he's coming back, he stops at the Pima Villages again, and uh, there is a group of people there, Peoples was his name, A.H. Peoples, Peoples Valley, and um, he's leading a party, and his scout is, once again, uh, Pauline Weaver. <laughs> Weaver and Swilling and all these guys just show up at all these different places. And now they're back, now they're together again. And um, uh, so Swilling joins them because they say, hey, um, we, we're, gonna, we're, we're gonna go up to, um, uh, they, had, they had found some promising along the Hoss Ample about where Wickenburg, just north of where Wickenburg is today. And so they go up there and um, at one place, burrows get lost and they went looking for the burrows, and right on top of a hill, they got up to a high hill there to see where they could get a view where those burrows had wandered off to, and right on the ground, where it shouldn't be, is a whole field of nuggets. They call it the potato patch. Just like a potato patch, huh? So you could just go around picking gold off the ground. Wow, that's kind of cool. It was just full of gold. They, they picked out a half a million dollars of gold, in placer gold, uh, on about a half acre. All right, so was that by today's standards or back then? No, standards back by, then. By, by that, it was what, $12 an ounce, I think, um, $12, $16 an ounce. So anyway, the, the rush is on now to uh, uh, Weaver, Stanton, and uh, uh, Rich Hill, and also still Prescott, the Prescott area, and they were combing those mountains for gold and silver and um, and that was really the big, oh, there's one more. Uh, Henry Wickenburg um, uh, had, had come out with the party, earlier party, and Wickenburg is down, he finds though, he finds load gold. So what is the difference with load gold? Load mining, which is, it's still in the ore, it just has to be processed. Uh, it has to be crushed mm -hmm. and uh, so forth, but the vulture mine. So right in that little area there, that short area between Prescott, Lynx Creek in that area, and down at the foot of Yarnell Hill at Weaver and Stanton and Rich Hill, and then right down a little further along the Hacienda at uh, uh, at Vulture City, uh, we have the richest load mine in Arizona, the single load mine uh, gold, and the single single placer strike, and uh, Lynx Creek, the richest uh, stream bed, placer placer gold stream bed. All of those are right along that area. It was just a Gold belt. Can you still mine there? Um, it, it's it's all taken up. Uh, uh, I think there's one place in Lynx Creek. Uh, it was a few years ago, anyway, where you could still pan, but everything else, somebody's got a claim on it. You got a claim. Yeah, on it. Mm -hmm. yeah. So that was the, the that was the 1860s was really the gold period in uh, uh, Arizona, and in the 70s they'll start hitting silver, silver king. Uh, was the was a was the huge gold uh, silver strike? It was the largest single silver mine in Arizona, uh, and then Tombstone in 1877. And by that time, you you know by the time this all plays out, um, copper's in uh, the electric age. Uh, the, you know we've got electric electric lights, electric wires, and and so it was almost as if there was a pattern. Uh, of, well, here's the gold, that'll get them here. And then here's the silver, uh, that'll, that'll, that'll take a little bit more work to get. Uh, but where, the, where there's silver, there's also gold. We enter the age of copper. It's almost like they were guided there. Yeah, almost like it was ordained. Ordained, yeah. Yeah. ordained to happen. Well, there's another period then, and that was one um, that uh, there was the, the, the government was battling back and forth on demonetization of silver, 1873. If you, if you collect silver dollars, you'll know from 1873 to 1878, you won't be able to buy any silver. They weren't, they weren't making silver dollars then. The government started buying silver again. That's, that's a plain talk. The, uh, and so, and that would last until 1893. And once again, uh, the uh, anti-silver, Sherman Anti-Silver Purchase Act. So in other words, politics made silver less valuable. And this really crippled places like Arizona, Colorado, 
um, uh, you know, these silver, these big silver uh, areas. And, um, but it opens it up for gold again. And around, oh, the 1890s, we see, uh, we see the beginning of, a, 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 the people are starting to look for gold again. This would happen again during the Great Depression when everybody was out of work. They would pick up their pans and go back up to these streams around Wickenburg and start panning out for gold. When I tell stories about the, 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 the superstition gold, um, no, geologically, uh, you know, in certain areas of the superstitions, such as Weaver's Needle, it's not geologically feasible uh, gold, but right at the front, you can't say there's no gold out there. They took millions out of there at the Mammoth and Bluebird Mine in the 1890s, early 1900s, and um, uh, and then there was another go uh, another big gold strike besides the uh, uh, at, at at Goldfield, uh, the gold or the superstition front of the, the West Range of the Superstition Mountains. Uh, it was at Oatman, and at Oatman and Gold Road, these were big strikes in the early 1900s, and Oatman was just a big boom town for gold. So we did have that, that was, that was the gold period again, the gold promotion, I call it the gold promotion period. Yeah. And they had, uh, they were running uh, ads for, uh, one, of, one of the ads uh, I, I remember uh, was a, a ocean going ore bearing ship like you find on Lake Superior going up the Hossiampa River. <laughs> Yeah. Selling, <laughs> selling, selling spot. shares, selling shares in a mine. There, you got this uh, Hossie Ampa River with, a, with 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 the Edmund Fitzgerald going up it. <laughs> <laughs> now that would have been a sight. This place was ripe for cons. Thank you, Marshall, for sharing all your knowledge about the gold rush that happened right here in Arizona. Another one of the mysteries of the Superstition Mountains. <laughs>